on Wall Street as well. Earnings continue to take center stage. We just told you about PepsiCo. We're also going to get Boeing, Fiat, Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler, GlaxoSmithKline, Procter & Gamble, United Technologies, and Twitter before the opening bell. After the close, we're going to hear from Amgen and PayPal. Also, on the corporate front, Bank of America's annual shareholder meeting is today. Big proposal on the table is a vote for splitting the roles of CEO and chairman. And haven't we revisited the, that about four times in the last couple of years? And I'm not convinced that yeah. one way or the other is better for corporate even, governance. Even Bank yes. of America itself. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to the market rally that we've been watching this week with the NASDAQ composite closing above the 6,000 level for the first time ever. Joining us right now is Michael Tyler. He is Chief Investment Officer at Eastern Bank Wealth Management. Also, J.J. Kinahan, who is Chief Strategist at TD Ameritrade. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. J.J., why don't you uh, give us a little bit of where you think this momentum is coming from? Is it because of the French elections? Is it because of the focus in Washington on the tax bill? What, what, what happened to change momentum just over the last few sessions? Well, I, I think overall it's really been the momentum of earnings, Becky. You know, we, we started out pretty strong with the financials. It's continued. We're picking up a lot of positives along the way with the French election. Obviously, Sunday night we had the incredible rally uh, in the S&Ps overnight, and then it continued throughout the day Monday with the French election being one thing that sort of took a headwind at least temporarily away from the market until we see what the next election shows us. Uh, I, I think, you know, uh, one thing we've all learned is to be a little bit careful about polls between right. Brexit and the last presidential election. But that being said, at the end of the day, it still comes down to earnings driving the market. Yes, the tax cut's great, and it has given us some momentum. But if the earnings were terrible, I don't think the other stuff would really matter nearly as much. You know, one of the other really interesting things to me, which isn't actually being covered all that much, is the fact that the Fed funds is showing us that we have a 76% probability of a rate hike in June, and it's being taken in stride by the market. That's gone from about 35% only a week and a half ago. So I think a lot of the things that are going on sort of under the surface continue to show that the market is in a much healthier place than uh, many of us actually thought. The numbers are coming in good. And the last thing I'll say is the CEOs in the earnings call are striking a really positive chord about growth. It's not about meeting expectations. It's about growing expectations. And I think that's also helping quite a bit. Yeah, that, that certainly has been what, what drove things yesterday morning in particular. Uh, Michael, when you look at the earnings calls, I've been surprised, yes, there have been a lot of CEOs on the calls who have talked about how strong growth has been, but there have also been um, plenty of releases I've seen where they've said, look, we hit these numbers despite what is still a challenging global market, Pepsi, just the latest one to cite uh, volatility and some struggling issues even with emerging markets at this point. Now, where do you think things are really shaping up, uh, the picture that earnings are giving us right now? Well, right, right now we're tracking toward about a 9% gain in earnings um, versus the same quarter a year ago. That's a lot better than the roughly 6% in the December quarter or 3% back in September. So the, the track is really good. And what I am hearing, yeah, there's, there's pockets of, of weakness here and there. But, but I, I don't know if it's large, weakness as much as it's the CEOs who were reluctant to give us too much strong guidance to feel like uh, maybe they're not quite convinced yet. Is it, what, what do you hey, think it's really early happening? in the year. Yeah. I, I think it's early in the year, and they don't want to commit too early. There's no reason for them to be too optimistic right now. But investors are looking ahead, and they're seeing that regardless of what's happening on the Washington front, the outlook for earnings looks really good, and that's going to continue holding the market up for some time, in particular for the multinational companies that are going to get a real lift out of improving conditions in Europe. Is that what you would be telling people to be betting on at this point, multinationals with exposure to Europe? I, I think that's a good bet. I, you know, the, the European markets, particularly the banks, have done very well in the last few weeks, which is great, and, and for good reason. They've underperformed for like seven or eight years in a row, so it's about time they start showing some growth, and it's about time that as the European Central Bank begins to talk about ending its quantitative easing program, which is, I think, several months off, but they're going to start thinking about it, that could be a big plus for Europe's banks and for European stocks in general. That's beginning to filter into stocks, um, and I think that also bodes well for U.S. companies that are doing business in Europe. JJ, we saw the NASDAQ close above 6,000 for the first time ever. Dow's just a couple of points below 21,000. Do these big round numbers matter? Uh, actually, uh, psychologically, maybe a little bit. You know, I, I, I don't know that it's a huge thing. 
but it does give people a lift. What it actually hopefully does, Becky, is sort of uh, bring some people to the market who weren't paying attention. So even if they don't necessarily invest, they go look at their 401ks or whatever it may be. So from that point of view, I think, yes, it does matter. And again, I, I think it helps give people a little bit of a psychological lift that perhaps this rally is for real. The one thing I will say that I, I'm curious is when we do get these tax planned sort of a little more details, we're supposed to get them today, I know, and, uh, you know, going forward, it may be tough for the tax plan details to live up to the expectations because the expectations have been so great since the election. So everyone's saying, when are we going to get the correction? I think that that's one time that you do have to be a little bit on edge about a as more of the details come out because it may be tough to get everything through Congress. All right. J.J. Michael? In fact, you made a very good, oh, yeah, go ahead, you made a very good point earlier. Uh, you made a greater point earlier about uh, the painful parts haven't yet come up, but they will be there because President Trump is going to have to persuade voters that a much larger deficit is a good thing unless there are those pain points that are going to come soon. And with interest rates beginning to rise, Obama got an eight-year pass on doubling the deficit without changing how much interest expense the Treasury had to pay to, um, each year to fund that. That's not going to happen with rising rates, so I think the deficit is going to come back into the picture as a more important point that could present some pain down the road. Yeah, giving us a, a blueprint for some of the battles to come in Congress. Michael and JJ, thank you guys both for joining us today. Thanks, Beck. Thank you. Okay, when we return, Twitter hasn't benefited from